Hello guys, welcome back to another video. This is Marcus or I make a pro and today well uh, it's a few hours after I shot the last one the um, installation or the attempted installation of graphics card and uh, power supply for my Dell Optiplex uh, 980 small form factor and right now I am going to do a boot test on it but the difference between this and the boot test I did yesterday or the previous video a couple ones a couple of videos back that is um, is that for this one I don't know what's going to happen and I'm not expecting it to fail either so if you watch the last video you know that the um, the graphics card went in smoothly my new graphics card um, and the power supply did not because uh, it was advertised wrong on the Amazon website, the uh, dimensions for it, so it didn't actually fit inside my case. Um, so I was like really pissed at the end of the last video and kind of disappointed. But um, now I have looked into a little bit more and have um, that set up to be returned. So Amazon is awesome with returns for like almost any reason as long as you didn't like deliberately destroy it <laughs> and as long as it's within the return policy so if you're trying to frankenstein a computer or basically do anything where the parts might not work or you're buying parts or for any reason there's any skepticism skepticism about them about anything amazon is really great for returns so if you can buy it somewhere else and you can buy it on amazon amazon's really nice about it um and they're relatively fast and just Amazon's good. Amazon is really good. Just, yeah. Anyways, uh, so since that video, I got a returns for the power supply figured out. I actually modified the hard drive casing just a little bit because it turns out my, uh, my graphics card was actually bowing a bit. Uh, that's not good, but I modified it a little bit and now it's all fine, safe and dandy. Um, and also, my RAM came. My Kingston 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I installed it, which means I'm now up to 12 gigabytes of RAM with the four uh, two by two sticks of non RAM that was already in there, uh, and the new 8 gigabyte one stick that was from Kingston that was in there, that is now in there. Um, and a bit of a surprise with this, that was actually low profile RAM. I wasn't expecting that, but it's what happened. Um, and I'm really glad about that because I haven't mentioned, or I mentioned this briefly, but there's an extra two and a half inch bay on the front of the computer here. I hope to do something with that and I have something to do that with. I have something to put, put in there, but it's kind of blocked by the RAM slots. And I think I mentioned that in the overview video. So the way to fix that would be low profile RAM. And I didn't try to order low profile RAM because it was like crazy expensive, but I got low profile RAM for 50 bucks and I might have been able to get it cheaper, but I'm not going to return it uh, when I have the low profile RAM here and I have a use for it and I'm already like prepared to pay for that. I've already paid for it. Um, so I basically instead of having the uh, two Nanya sticks on dual channel, because there's white, black, white and black, two slots of white and black. Uh, in my computer, um, I've switched them over to one on a black and one on a white, and I've put the low profile RAM in the place that would obstruct the two and a half inch. That doesn't make sense, try and understand. But basically the low profile is in the spot that would be blocking, um, that where, f if full size RAM would be there, it would be blocking the two and a half inch uh, bay. So I'm gonna see about that. I might still have to modify the thing that's going in there. But yeah, uh, that's really exciting for me. But another thing that's going to be going on here with this boot test is um, I am going to see if that RAM works as is. And if it boots up, and if it boots up XP, which I really hope it doesn't, because it's supposed to have 7 on it, and 7 is good, and 7 could be upgraded to 10 for free, and XP cannot. Uh, and also, um, what I fear might have happened was when someone realized the graphics card or whatever else was wrong with this computer, uh, they were like, well, I'm not going to pay the money to replace this. It still has a good drive in it with Windows 7 on it. Might as well put this other crap drive in it with Windows XP. 
and take the seven drive. I really hope that isn't what happened. Or even worse, they like replaced the sticker on it. But in 2010, XP was really outdated, and I hope that they weren't loading a computer with XP in 2010. Anyways, I've delayed long enough. Um, so because the new graphics card does not have S-Video, and I don't really have a, a good DVI-D thing, and I have VGA, but it's just like, yeah, um, it's mediocre. Uh, it's wide use for me, very applicable, but not, it's like, wh when you can do HDMI, do HDMI. So I have my monitor TV thing uh, set up on HDMI, uh, and new graphics card on this guy has HDMI. So I'm going to see if it can boot up, or at least in the BIOS where we can check stuff. And also, this is the first time I've booted it up while the BIOS password jumper is removed, so I can actually edit stuff. Alright, six minutes into the video, de delayed enough. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on that, and oh, here we go, no, we're about to get a no signal message, v that's S video. Uh, VGA, HDMI, video 5 on this. Okay, so now we're plugged into HDMI, and I just hit the power button, and let's see. Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. I'm gonna have F2 set up, because I believe that is BIOS. Because I want to go into BIOS before I attempt to boot. F2, F2, F2. Ooh, can I tell boot agent? Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Did I just totally miss the uh, Dell screen by, like, blinking? Oh, now the system memory has, ooh, changed? Ha! Uh, strike the F1 key to continue, F2 to run the system utility. All right, so that's good. It recognized my 8 gig, F2, I guess. Oh, here we go. Good, system utility. So, general, oh, no, can't use, maybe, it, can't I use mouse? I guess not. Um. Alright, system board, BIOS version A05, blah, uh, ooh, 117, oh, wow, that's nice, I didn't know this, so this is actually a 2010, an early 2011 machine, not a 2010 machine, so it was manufactured on, uh, January 17th, 2011, and the original owner got it on April 19th, 2011. So memory installed, 12 gigabytes, woo, woo! I've got 12 gigabytes of RAM in this system. That's awesome, woo! All right, so that's probably as much as I'll ever need, but I can upgrade it to 16 if I need to. Okay, awesome, it recognizes the 12 gigabytes. And, okay, so let's see. Uh-oh, hold on, uh, I don't know, number, Okay, 1300 megahertz, number of active channels, two. I don't know about that one. That's a little weird. Shouldn't be two active channels. Um, DDR3, two gigabytes on DIM1, uh, eight gig on. Sorry about that. So much for the no one is home, no one could come to interrupt me. Someone got home. Anyways, I was talking about the memory. Um, so it recognizes that it as DDR3, 1300 megahertz, and 12 gigabytes. And apparently it's only two active channels, which is weird. Um, so there's my service tag on here, and I don't know if you can do anything with that, but I think it's just safer to not give you that, so it's a good thing you can't view the screen. Um, so, alright, sorry about that. Someone came down again. Alright, so... Uh, I was talking about the DIMM slots, so it recognizes all the RAM and the slots they're on, which is good. So then we have our processor, nothing has changed there. Um, we've got our, it's an i5, clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, uh, Intel 680, yeah, um, dual core, 64 bit, blah blah blah. Ooh, this is new. Um, it, on the bottom there, it has PCI information. So on slot one, which is our graphics card, it says that it has VGA and it's VGA compatible and it has multimedia. So hopefully it uh, understands both the DVI-D and the HDMI as well as the VGA. 
uh, slot 2, which is our regular PCI, is empty, and our Wi-Fi device, which is the uh, X1 PCIe, is empty, because that one is specifically for a Dell network card. I think I can get one of those on like eBay for pretty cheap, uh, and just plug that in there. We have that empty network antenna slot um, on the back. So if I can do that, and I have Wi-Fi on it for, like built actually for the machine, it's not some other thing. All right, so date and time, uh, accurate date and time still, boot sequence, uh, USB floppy drive. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with that now, drives. Um, let's see, oh, diskette. I'm, okay, so this all seems on, um, okay, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I guess I can take a look at the uh, in-depths of the BIOS later on, but it recognizes the RAM, and I can, ooh, actually, post behavior. I want to see that. Um, okay, fast boot, and unlock LEDs, post hotkey. Okay, that's just F12. Uh, keyboard error detection, all right. Um, yeah, okay, so there's not a whole bunch of information there, and I can look at the rest of that there. Oh, we got a red line. Could be a glitch. Um, Optiplex 980 series, come on. Come on. Same message we always get. Test failure and exit. Okay. Oh, Windows XP. So this isn't supposed to have XP on it, but it looks like it does. And let's see if we can actually get a boot up of XP. <gasps> oh my. Oh my. All right, it's 10 years old for the computer, but we've got XP on it. Control Alt Delete. I don't know why the heck they had XP on this computer, but they have it. Uh, um, well, it's Windows XP Professional. Well, this boot was successful. It's just incredibly slow, and we'll probably have no idea what to do with those six or, uh, 12 gigabytes of RAM I put in there. So it's successful, I can check out the BIOS, and I can see what the heck is going on with XP. But we now know it boots, so that's really nice. See you next time. Uh, again, we got returns on the bad power supply I figured out, and I don't think it, I explained, uh, so I'll mention it real quick. I started a forum on this machine, and I guess I will link to it. So I started a forum on it, on Tom's hardware, and. I uh, tried to get a little bit of advice on the components I bought and stuff. Uh, and people were saying that the power supply wasn't going to fit uh, because of the um, shelf for the DVD tray. And I tried to explain that, that I didn't think that was going to be a problem. Um, but as they were doing that, they also uh, s pointed out alternatives. So they didn't link me to any other power supplies that would work, unfortunately and I'm going to look for a new one, but they did say that apparently uh, this machine can run, uh, even though it's suggested to have the graphics card with at least a 300 watt power supply, uh, it can run in under that. And the, um, the graphics card only draws X amount of power and that's well within the limits of my PSU. So it does work on that. Um, again, I'll link that. So. That's about it. Boot test was successful, and I'll look into the XP on it a bit more. See you next time. Alright, so I know I closed this off, but I discovered something right after I turned the camera off. So, when I click Control Delete, which is how they do, like, corporation and school and stuff, um, I, I get this message. So usually this is, like, um, 
this computer is the property of the school district. Uh, but this system is solely for the Holly Frontier Company's business use. All information stored on this system, the property of the Holly Frontier Company's, authorized users only, blah, blah, blah. So it came from the Holly Frontier Company's. Um, and I now know exactly where this came from. I was a little in the dark about that. Um, and, of course, when I hit enter, I have to either enter in a local username or password, which I don't know, or enter in a network username and password, which I'm not connected to the network, nor do I know the username and password for it. So that means it's time to break out my suite of password cracking tools for Windows. Uh, have a couple of those laying around, and I can use them and try and get into this computer. So we'll update on that soon. But it's going to take me a couple of days to do that. But now we know the computer boots up, and yeah. So see you next time.